I went to an all-girls school and I went there for the first uh, 14 years of my life. And this was very important because everyone was important and there was no question as to who would do what. We knew it was a girl. Uh, so if we had a president of the class, if we had the captain of the um, softball team, uh, everyone who ran track, everyone who competed in the chess or the math league, we were all women and there was no question about it. And I think this was a very strong position to come from. Uh, and I needed that strength as I uh, braved the uncharted waters of becoming a, uh, an orchestral uh, conductor. It is true that we are about at 4% of all the conductors out there. So 4% of us uh, are women. And as you can imagine, this is rather um, kind of unheard of for some, for some people. Um, and you can have the, the craziest kind of uh, interactions with people or questions. And, um, you know, I, I got all kinds of questions uh, or assumptions. You know, I was never the conducting assistant. I was always the personal assistant, of course. Uh, and um, so it's hard to establish oneself uh, as an individual, as a musician and as a professional when you're up against uh, coming across barriers and having to overcome uh, hurdles and, and uh, misconceptions about yourself before you even open your mouth. There are a lot of also um, unwanted and, and uh, displaced comments uh, that it, uh, were unfortunate and kind of can destabilize you, especially as a young conductor. Um, it's already hard enough to be a young leader and trying to work with established groups who have much more experience than you do, and yet you're supposed to be leading them. Um, and, and then when you also have to um, kind of get over some people's prejudices or uh, incredulity, well, it's not even possible to have a, a woman in the, at the helm. You're much too pretty to be a, a conductor. I could never take you seriously if I were in the orchestra. Uh, so, you know, such comments as that. And th at these moments, there's, um, there's a choice to be made. And you can either choose to let that comment sink in and penetrate you and influence you, or uh, you can refuse the, the comment and, and you can choose what to do with the comment. You can't choose that you just heard that, but you can choose to do something positive uh, for yourself and, and choose to ignore it or be calm with the comment and say, well, that was interesting. That disturbed me. Why did that disturb me? And, and you can maybe learn something uh, from the destabilization of that comment, which will better inform you going forward. Um, so I think this is very important because if you do not take charge of your own narrative and you do not um, almost with, with conviction say, I will be the master of my, my own vessel and you don't tell me where I get to go, I'm going to go where I need to go. It's not that I want, this is a need that I will, that I will go through my life. Uh, as I became a young mother, I made certain choices that the conducting profession might not have uh, understood. Well, you, you don't want this career at all price to sacrifice everything. Um, and yet they were, they were choices that resonated with myself and I had to consider who I was in this profession uh, and, the, and, and who I was as a mother and at, in the context of my family. So my personal life and my professional life, I needed to have a holistic approach to. And I also had to go against the grain a little bit in a profession which is all consuming. Uh, it really wants all of you. And, uh, and I made this decision and I stand by it. And I think I'm a better uh, pedagogue and a better performer and a more uh, effective and honest, I think, um, artist because of it, uh, to remain true to yourself and not to go down some path which is quintessentially not for you. Uh, so to really have conviction, it's okay. It's okay if you have to take out the machete and start chopping through the jungle of life, you know? It's scary, it's an adventure, but it's all right. It's all right because you're going to come out through it and you're gonna come out stronger for it. And I think that's, that's what I also wanted to talk about, making um, these mini 
groups of women, you know, um, uh, when I was in college, I stayed in an all women dorm uh, because it was a wonderful experience because you can have these moments uh, where you, you have a privileged uh, moment to just talk about things. Uh, and all kinds of things that could that could interest you, but which maybe are not so immediate when we're in mixed company. Um, I don't think that we should ghettoize ourselves, uh, not at all, but I think everybody needs a point of resource. And I think the point of resource is connecting in a very nurturing way uh, with, with um, others who can share your experience and will be receptive to that so that you can kind of mutually strengthen yourself. And that's that's what I, I am very fortunate to be able to bring to um, the Dallas Opera now in their Heart Institute, which was uh, an incredible institute and is still continuing now in its sixth year uh, to mentor female conductors and executive directors uh, in the performing arts and especially in the opera sector. And now I'm, I'm one of the master teachers there. So I really um, think that's incredibly important that we help each other and that we transmit with, uh, with all the freedom in the world uh, so that we can, we can um, strengthen each other and go out into the world and be really productive and significant members um, armed with the strength of self-knowledge and also mutual support. I, I think that is totally right on the money. I think that uh, we tend to uh, look at ourselves in a more critical light. Uh, I think we, we demand more of ourselves. There have been studies done actually to show that women um, will not put themselves in a position where they find that they are exposed or vulnerable uh, as, men, as, as men will. Men, even boys in a classroom, they'll hold up their hand and they don't know what they're going to say, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so this really translates into our professional lives. And I have come to embrace, because I am totally perfectionist. I love to get everything together. It's kind of like packing the parachute before you jump out of the plane. Um, but now I have embraced the DOS, the dirty operating system. <laughs> might not be clean, might not be perfect, but it's good enough. So get out the door and do it and you'll figure it out on the way. Well, you know what? Yes. And uh, it was one of the hardest things professionally, of course, that I had to go through. And yet one of the most formative I was a young conductor, but it wasn't quite my fault. A young conductor, the, the real conductor who was supposed to do this project bailed at the last minute. And I thought that I had done my work enough to step into his shoes. And indeed, I was not prepared enough. And the orchestra, which was kind of the creme de la creme of Europe, let me know it. <laughs> and I had to go after a rehearsal, I would keep it together. It was like being in a boxing ring and taking psychological, you know, hits uh, during during each rehearsal. And I would go back into my room. I would cry. I would take out the score. I would let the tears fall on the score to try to get even more prepared. Know that that was not enough. Dry off my eyes. Get back in there and take it again. But that was as painful as it was. It taught me what I needed to do in order to be truly prepared. And I haven't had something like that happen to me since. So. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway, especially during 2020 and this terribly difficult time for us all, is to remember that you are not alone. I think that uh, during these moments where you're suffering, uh, you can really feel as if you're the only one, uh, that you're isolated. Uh, but you know, think of a, an apartment building. Although you have your own apartment, you have someone just above you, just below you, and just right next door. And all is, all you have to do is knock. So just remember that we're a really a cohesive society and that help and uh, friendship is everywhere. You just need to go out and knock. Mm -hmm.